There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switching bait, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their back confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand that pulls the string and makes his little puppet dance to every song he sings as the night falls in on a rising tide. Look beyond the shadows. Behold a pale horse ride. Welcome everybody to Resurrect the Republic, RTR Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. I'm your host, Lori Anderson, and Tom Lacavera Stewart will also be with us tonight, as well as uh, Eric Hughes Jones of Courtroom Observers. I want to address quite a few things with you this evening, and as you know, I always try to give you a little bit of something to smile about before we get into the down and dirty. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share some information with you. Mainstream media, CNN, Clinton News Network, is now in CYA mode for the Project Veritas video that came out exposing the um, the manipulation of the voter rolls, the manipulation uh, for voter fraud, and for the um, domestic terrorism that was brought on by the DNC. One has resigned and one has been fired. Mike, could you possibly play LV clip one? video comes from Project Veritas, brainchild of James O'Keefe, who's got a less than stellar reputation for accuracy. However, some of the things you'll hear on the tape are certainly hard to ignore. Enough we're learning for one person to be fired so far, another to resign. A lot of questions being asked about the recording. Senior investigative correspondent Drew Griffin tonight has the story. The undercover videos produced by discredited conservative activist James O'Keefe suggest it was Democratic operatives hired political activists working in coordination with the DNC to instigate violence and incite reactions at Trump rallies. And in one of the undercover videos, Scott Fovel, a subcontractor for a DNC-hired firm called Democracy Partners, supposedly explains just how he does it. The script. Okay. The script of engagement. Sometimes the crazies bite and sometimes the crazies don't bite. When they're outside the rally... Mm -hmm. They're more affected out. They're harder to get in. The media will cover it no matter where it happens. I assume it's always in the rally. initiating the conflict by having leading conversations with people who are naturally psychotic. I mean, honestly, it is not hard to get some of these assholes to pop off. Right. It's, it's a matter of showing up to want to get into the rally in a Planned Parenthood t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, Trump is a Nazi, you know, you can, you can message to draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. According to the undercover videos, it was this man the Democratic National Committee turned to to organize the work. Bob Kramer is the husband of Illinois Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. He's part of a group called Democracy Partners, and he too was caught on undercover video. Here explaining how he was hired by the Democratic National Committee to stage counter demonstrations and press conferences wherever the Trump campaign showed up. Wherever Trump and Pence are going to be, we have events. Okay. 
and we have a whole team across the country that does that, both consultants and people from the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party apparatus and people from the uh, campaign, the Clinton campaign. Uh, and uh, you know, my role with the campaign is to manage all that. Kramer stepped down from the campaign today and announced his subcontractor, Scott Fovel, was no longer working for his firm. Both the DNC and the Clinton campaign deny any coordination with anything involving the incitement of violence. Kramer himself told CNN his former contractors were committing barroom talk, insisting none of what is being described by Fovel ever actually happened. In a statement, Kramer writes, we regret the unprofessional and careless hypothetical conversations that were captured on hidden cameras of a regional contractor for our firm. He is no longer working with us. The Clinton campaign response, while Project Veritas has been known to offer misleading video out of context, some of the language and tactics referenced in the video are troubling, even as a theory or a proposal never executed. We support the Democratic National Committee's appropriate action addressing this matter and look forward to continue waging a campaign of ideas worthy of our democratic process. James O'Keefe is a convicted criminal, they add, with a history of doctoring video to advance his ideological agenda. Andrew Griffin joins us now. So what's the DNC doing about this? First, they put out a statement saying, Anderson, there's no evidence that anything described on these tapes actually took place. They agree oh, with Bob Kramer's is. decision to step away and separate from any oh, yeah, work uh, on the Clinton campaign. But they're also going to investigate, they say, James O'Keefe to find out if he did anything illegal in uh, obtaining or uh, gathering these tapes. We also did just get a statement in from Democracy Partners. That's a a group of uh, uh, a partnership basically that works on democratic campaigns they said that we were breached and betrayed uh, but still standing and we condemn excuse me here violence and election tampering in all forms so that's where it stands tonight Anderson. <laughs> all right, Drew Griffin, Drew, thanks. You can say. bet the panel's got plenty to say about this. Clinton supporter and former Obama senior advisor Van Jones is with us. Clinton supporter and Democratic strategist Maria Cardona, chief political analyst Gloria Borger, Trump supporters Jeffrey Lord and Scotty Nell Hughes, and our political director David Chalian. Gloria, how big a deal is this? I mean, it certainly looks damning on the tape. It, it does look damning, and we don't know how big a deal it is. It's just more uh, garbage in what's been a very ugly and divisive campaign. We don't know whether this was locker room talk. Uh, to coin a phrase, to use a phrase, uh, or uh, whether this... It, it is sort of, I mean, though, uh, ironic bragging. that they're using the term <laughs> right, right. barroom yeah, talk right, right. when they condemn Donald Trump exactly. for, you know, saying locker room Exactly. Talk. Uh, we, we don't know Says how CIA. this video was gotten. We don't know how it was edited. I mean, there are, there are so many unanswered questions to this story, so you need to start peeling the layers of the onion here. Um, what I will say, though, you know, on the face oh, of it, yeah. you see the story. Yeah, uh, uh, it first appears in Breitbart. It confirms an existing negative narrative. If you are so disposed to believe that the Clinton campaign is dishonest, et cetera, et cetera, it, it will do that. I think, however, this is a story that needs a lot more uh, reporting on it and the the tape is is quite disturbing honestly jeffrey i mean as a trump supporter you you hear these people talking about you know i'm not surprised egging people on and I'm tormenting not, violence yeah I'm, I'm not surprised in the least I, as a matter of fact i said some version of this months and months ago without knowing about this and said this is what the american left historically does they do things like this the whole chicago riots in 1968 were based with these kind of provocations and and to be bipartisan about it for a moment the first thing I thought of when I heard this was Nixon's plumbers, uh, who, who were out there breaking the law deliberately, uh, burglarizing Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office and this kind of thing. I mean, this is not acceptable Info in American wars. politics. Yeah. I mean, this is totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. um, and here we are. That Maria? Yeah. It, it, you're right. It is not acceptable at all, which is why I'm glad that the DNC and the Hillary for America campaign came out and said as much. I do think we have to underscore, though, the fact <laughs> that James O'Keefe has zero credibility in this area. He's the one who, who did the doctored videos of Planned Parenthood, <laughs> which were completely he's the false. the one who took down he's a, condemned, he's, a, he's a criminal, right? Yeah. And so I think...
think that yes, we have we have to look into it, and to make sure that you know none of this actually happened. The DNC says none of it actually happened, and in fact, this. This group and this guy was not working for the DNC. But, well, when I, I think to say he's a criminal, by the way, not, I mean, so he, yes, he, he did commit, uh, I guess. He's a convicted he committed, criminal, yeah. isn't he? Well, he, he was convicted we of a crime. I don't know true. that one brands some person a <laughs> criminal for the rest of their life right. based on one action. Okay, Van, so what do you make that, of this? That's true, but then I think we have to continue to look at it and see well, what's going on. Well, there are two different things here. Um, one is the, uh, the, it looks like a confession from Creamer that they are you know, sending people to the rallies to stir up trouble. Um, that's not illegal. Uh, it's un, it's, it's yes, it is. Um, but you can kind of live with that. The other, though, is horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is a conspiracy to rig an election. Um, now, I would take that much more seriously if it didn't come from Pinocchio. <laughs> I mean, the guy, right. he just, I mean, I don't like, you know, calling people criminals. By the way, don't, that's Donald Trump's plane arriving here in Las Vegas. He's arriving for the debate tomorrow. But, go ahead. but I, I would take... Listen to I this. Would, I would take it a lot more seriously. They're, they're not booing me, Jeffrey. As much as you wish they were booing me, they're not booing me. They're booing your kids. Uh, but, um, Listen to what so, they say. Um, that, so, so here's the deal. Um, I think that the fact that this comes from O'Keefe is a reason to withhold judgment. Um, you, you get, you, it's, a, it's a reason to withhold judgment because this guy literally is Mr. Pinocchio. He's, he's, it... So the funny thing about this right here, okay, oh. Oh, is so many God. avenues of this. First of all, we're not talking okay. about just voter fraud. We're talking about they got busted on tape. They, of course, mainstream media is now having to do damage control. Is that not great oh, yeah. news, everybody? Well, that it that it's it's great news, but you know, it blows my mind to hear him first say that sending people to rallies to incite acts of violence is not illegal. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, but if, if you step out, if you step out in your yard and you you incite a neighbor to uh, and and harass a neighbor and harangue a neighbor. You you get it's. I mean, it's a disorderly conduct charge, but it is not legal right. to do so. It's called right. disturbing the peace. But if you do it uh, on such a mass scale, would it be considered disturbing the peace, or would it be domestic terrorism? That would be under well, of course, under their 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 new uh, yeah uh, under their definition totalitarian yeah <laughs> under their definition it would it would most certainly fall under domestic terrorism because I can think of folks that they have leveled that against who've done far less that did right. not commit any acts of violence no right. acts of violence in right. fact so here again we have uh, communist rabble rousers uh, doing all. Uh, attacks. Now, the thing that bothers me, that troubles me, is they attack uh, O'Keefe's credibility by saying, well, he's a criminal. These are the same communists that most of them, by the way, uh, I believe, uh, um, oh, who was it? Which one of them wrote his diaries, the prison diaries? Uh, why, why, uh, uh, it slips in my head. But most of these guys, uh, they, they write their, their memoirs from prison. The, the, most of these people are are criminals to society. Uh, you know, it, it it just blows my mind that that they would turn around and then they're going to turn around and paint him as a criminal for for being found guilty for one criminal charge. I forget what it was, but and say he's a discredited journalist. Now, how is he discredited? In, in what I'd way like to know that too because because he wasn't the one speaking. They were. They they had. Right. They had what, what in the old-fashioned terms, diarrhea of the mouth. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. They, they hung themselves. No one told them to say what they said. You could nope. tell it was completely fluid situation. Oh, that, and I love the part and, where and they're he investigating wasn't even involved. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, you know they've got to do that because he even helped to bring down ACORN, which also had a lot to do with what? Voter registration and yep. voter fraud. Um, yep. So, uh, you know, they want to paint him out to be a bad guy because, of course, um, he's exposing their corruption. Everything uh, just keeps on coming and coming and coming. So uh, I thought everybody may enjoy that. As you know, I'm, wow. I'm trying when I'm on to do some 
uh, good news of exposing some things before we get into the stuff that's just going to give you a headache um, for what's going on. So I do want to yeah. let um, individuals know that um, uh, American, it is being reported um, by an activist post. Uh, last week, a Canadian journalist published pictures of the U.S. Air Force repainting their F.A. 18 jets to match the paint scheme of Russian jets currently deployed in Syria. Though the journalist Christian Borres suggested the unusual paint job was due to standard military, quote, aggressor squadrons, war games meant to simulate engaging the enemy. Some have speculated oh, yeah. that it could be proof of an imminent false flag meant to justify U.S. boots on the ground in Syria. Regardless, Oh, my of God. They actually, they actually used a description of what they used to do in World War II. Mm-hmm. Okay, now the modern jets have identi- uh, they have uh, computerized uh, uh, identification uh, uh, computers. Mm-hmm. And when they're playing war games, mm-hmm. they can switch uh, their signal so that the one pilot knows that the other pilot is the good guy or the bad guy. They, they don't... Yeah. Oh, my God. That, how stupid do they think the people... This is false flag setup. Right. Well, I will let y'all know this. The Aggressor Squadron have indeed been part of the U.S. military war games since the late 60s. Um, planes that are painted to appear as the quote-unquote aggressor employ enemy tactics, techniques, and procedures in order to offer U.S. soldiers a realistic simulation of, of air combat. During much of the Cold War, many of the aggressor planes were also painted in Russian colors to simulate combat encounters anticipated with the Soviet Union. However... <laughs> Here's that, however, it would not be done in Syria where an active well, that's my point. That military situation my point. is going on. A war game is not going to be held there. So keep your that's eyes open. Yeah, keep your eyes open for possible um, uh, false uh, Do you mean to tell me they're actually still painting fighter jets that travel at the speeds that they travel they're actually they're, to make it more realistic they're still doing that like they used to do in world war ii apparently well that's that's strange because i know that i you know i uh, i i remember speaking to a fighter pilot once and and uh, uh i was interested in the top gun school and all of that and how they how they would do their uh, uh you know their combat training and how they could tell, you know, all from, you know, flying at speeds like that. Because, you know, not, you can't always get a, a good visual uh, fix on something. That's when he told me about the the, um, the electronics and how they would, uh, they would, they would identify each other by the electronic signatures that I guess that the planes were programmed with. But that's rather interesting, but not in Syria. No, 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 no. Right, right. You no, know, that sounds to me. That sounds to me like a, they're they're getting ready to strike, mm-hmm. and they want the people on the ground uh, to see uh, and Russia the the uh, and yeah. yeah, yeah, and the people yeah. of the globe to think it's Russia. False flag. And can, yeah, and you can clearly see in this paint job, and and I sent you the the um, article on it. You can clearly see where it has. Uh, you know, the U.S. Marines, because they haven't finished painting it yet. So um, it's pretty it's pretty evident there. Um, whoever got those uh, pictures did a darn good job, and hopefully um, they won't be able to get by with any kind of false flag type situation. We've got enough going on, uh, of course, in those type of areas as well. And we have to be vil- vigilant, because if we're not, obviously... Um, CNN sure as heck isn't going to be. <laughs> How do you That's like the their cover? How do you like their cover? And it was even busted that 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 one specific paid protester instigator was paid. What was it? Uh, it was like sixteen. Oh, oh yeah, jumping. Oh, jumping back to O'Keefe for a minute. Yeah, uh, um, I, the Russian thing kind of blows my mind, but. Um, you remember how they said that 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 this was only in theory. Everybody said there. It's only in theory. But do you remember, anybody remember the article about the 68 or 69-year-old uh, woman with, with uh, oh, I forget what she had, a COPD or something, uh, who got punched at a Trump rally? Uh, and, and this yeah. guy goes on to admit 
that yeah. he, that she was one of their operatives. Yeah, she was. Okay. okay, that was in the newspaper. Still, you can go and you can you can uh, see the articles that were written about this, and none of these articles that I've seen in, in the mainstream media have retracted. Mm-hmm. And or or have added the information that she was an operative after this has come out. So they're still floating news stories that make it sound like a little old lady got beat up by a trumper. Uh-huh. Just that that's not look, you know, freedom of speech is one thing. When you out and out commit fraud during mm-hmm. an election, mm-hmm. It is quite another thing. That is not free speech. Right. Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, I mean, and this, this this gentleman, okay, Kramer, uh, he's married to an Illinois Democratic Congresswoman. Jan Shavosky, I guess is how you say her name. Oh, how and convenient. Is, and he's a convicted felon. So let's go to the next. Oh, the criminal. <laughs> the the next little neat thing that I wanted to uh, to cover about the rigging uh, of the vote um, because you know they love to say you know this didn't happen this didn't happen yada 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 okay so Robert Creamer the one that was exposed earlier this week by James O'Keefe at the Project Veritas regarding rigging elections. What you may not know about him is he spent time in federal prison in 2006 for bank fraud, and he visited the White House 340 times, including 45 times to visit Barack Hussein Obama Satoro Sabarka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it says... Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> right? Uh, tongue tie, tongue tie, everybody. So earlier uh, today, it says, uh, earlier today, this is in Freedom Outpost, by the way. It says, earlier today, we wrote about a new Project Veritas undercover video that under that uncovered several Democratic operatives openly discussing in explicit detail how to commit massive voter fraud. One of the operatives was a person by the name of Robert Creamer, who is a co-founder of a Democratic consulting firm called Democracy Partners. Within the video, an undercover journalist details a plan to register Hispanic voters illegally and having them work as contractors, to which Creamer can be heard offering support, saying that there are a couple of organizations that that's their big trick. How <laughs> nice. So if you want to find out more, it says voter fraud isn't Kramer's only criminal speciality. A quick look at Wikipedia reveals that Kramer spent five months in federal prison back in 2006 for a $2.3 million bank fraud in relation to his operation of public interest groups in the 90s. (laughs) So the real criminal... Of course, isn't O'Keefe who had like a minor charge for something, and I don't believe it was a felony. So actually, I while, think it while, had to do with recording. I think it had yeah, to do yeah, with for record. Yeah, for doing his job. Yeah, yeah, which which isn't actually against the law. That's just their their horse manure. But right. so so this this nitwit has the the audacity to call O'Keefe a criminal for exposing a criminal. <laughs> If y'all want to get the whole article on that, you can go to Freedom Outpost, and it's called Vote Rigging Guru and Former Federal Prison Inmate Robert Creamer Visited White House 340 Times, Visited Obama 45 Times, and it's written by Tim Brown, uh, a very phenomenal, phenomenal person. Oh, yeah, we love love Tim. He's an amazing person. Okay, so um, we have so much to cover tonight, Tom, but let me tell you another thing that's funny. Since this um, voter thing is up, and this will be the last topic I cover on the on the voter issue, pretty much. But um, since it's actually, you know, the left is trying to spin it off as, oh, people are just crazy. There's no problems. You know how mainstream media is spinning it. Then tell me why that the Subcommittee on Information Technology hearing date of September 28th, 2016, was addressing cybersecurity, ensuring the integrity of the ballot box. Repeat that one more time. Yeah. That the, the Subcommittee on Information Technology was holding a hearing September the 28th, 2016 at 2 p.m. on cybersecurity, ensuring the integrity of the ballot box. Now, mind you, this, of course, is a meeting about trying to get the feds involved with what is state's 
issues. And oh, yeah. So just to let you know, you can find that on uh, oversight.house.gov. Go under the hearings and you can you can find the whole thing, the all the paperwork, the documents. Um, the representative from Georgia uh, did a really good write up about it as far as against the federal government getting involved, which, of course, you know, the federal government wants to get their hands in that because it'll be easier to rig the elections. But um, oh, so yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all can check on that because we have so much to cover tonight. We've. We really, truly do. Just like that that age-old tactic of, of redistricting. I love it how they, they do that. You know, just it's these amazing. people are one tactic to another, to another, to another. It is. It's it's sick. You know, look, look at Hillary Clinton. You know, she did her, when she do her, her master's thesis, I think it was, or, or something. She did a paper. That it was pretty important at the time on uh, Saul Alinsky. And the White House uh, had had silenced that when they got into the White House with Bill uh, at their request. And you know who Saul Alinsky refers to? Uh, you know he, re- he oh, yeah. refers to the, the the great revolutionary, the first revolutionary and first rabble rouser in the history of the world, which was Lucifer. Yeah. Yep. So here, it, it makes it makes me it doesn't surprise me when you see these and you know several times in the, throughout the course of Olinsky's life he referred to uh, that that doctrine uh, and uh, there you have these these individuals you wonder why uh, they have no problem lying mm-hmm. cheating mm-hmm. stealing mm-hmm. conniving rabble rousing uh, having little old ladies assaulted all to try and uh, you know, squeeze uh, manipulation out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the, the Clintons, one of the, the people that were supposed to testify against her that was that was killed, she used his death as a pitch for gun control. <laughs> she knows no, absolutely just no bounds. This woman is just no bounds at all. Right, and, right. I mean, she really doesn't. And I don't know if you remember this, um, Tom, but uh, even Ben Carson exposed that. At yes, the R- yes, at I the remember. R- I, yes, at the I remember RNC, Ben Carson stand up and say that. Yes, you know he yep. um, he railed against her big time. Um, as he a matter said, of, "We are we are not we are one nation under God, endowed by our Creator with certain and unalienable rights." Uh, on yeah, and he also said and. Uh, on on every dollar bill and on every coin, it says "In God We Trust," and he he he, he was yeah he was on fire that night, and he well, peeled back yeah. Solinsky and and Hillary Clinton's adoration because Hillary Clinton just didn't write this on on Solinsky. He actually helped her. They they actually oh, yeah. got together and and he helped her uh, with that that paper. So I mean, it's not just like uh, a mild adoration. Anyway, folks, we'll be right back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Be right back. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Are you still looking for that one iodine that you can really trust? A medical doctor-endorsed product that is backed by honest research and true integrative science. Then search no further. Go to Nutramedical.com for Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutriodine, proven time and time again to be the very best iodine available for you. Nutriodine is the only Tesla-activated monatomic plasma iodine in the world. It optimizes mitochondrial function and generation of new mitochondria from totally neutral 
neutralizing the venom from a desert recluse spider bite in Southern California to eliminating malaria parasites reported by medical missionaries in Central India. Dr. Bill's Nutriodine is simply the most powerful healing formula there is. Nutriodine clears the body of all known pathogens, restores it to an alkaline state, and even promotes stem cell regeneration. Order Dr. Bill's Nutriodine today at 888 212 8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Hi, my name is Chris. Since the 1970s, I have been actively making products available that support good health. What makes my juices flow is helping mankind get healthy. Today, I'm going to tell you about a product that will help your juices to flow. I am excited to recommend Dr. Miller's Holy Tea to you. Even if we are eating a clean diet, these impurities are entering our bodies. Holy Tea moves these poisons that are creating havoc with our health out of our bowels. It works on the whole digestive system. The five tasty herbs are combined to provide an amazing detoxifying and healing tea that will rid your body of the pollutants and soothe your digestive tract, and in some cases, help you lose weight. It is critical for our health to move all of the environmental toxins from our bodies. The holy tea can do that. As a hydrocolon therapist, remember, with every BM, you're supporting RBN. www.holytea.org. 800-326-2001. Do you or someone you know suffer from chest pain, blood pressure, cholesterol, or irregular heartbeat? Are you looking for a more natural solution to overcome these health challenges? You hear the ads all the time. If this stuff's so good, why doesn't my doctor prescribe it? That's easy. Doctors are not trained in natural medicine. Extendivite Heart Tonic does want you to be as healthy as you can be, and it really works. Take Extendivite for six months and your doctor will say, I don't know what you're doing, but don't stop. It's working for you. Get the dependability of Extendivite. Just see how you feel in six months. A two-month supply of either capsules or liquid is only $69.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with you, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Statmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and of course you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at numanarepublic.com. That's N U M A N. NNA Republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. I'm your host, Tom Lacabara Stewart, and I am joined by my co host, Lori Anderson, my co host, John Mesmer, and I do believe we have Eric from Courtroom Observers on with us as well. We have a whole lot of information for you tonight, folks. So I'm going to let Lori take the, the wheel on this. She prepared tonight's show, so she's, uh, she's going to take the lead. Go ahead, Lori. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And yes, we do have a lot for everyone tonight to listen to. I wanted to make sure so that uh, our listeners do know, because they have followed us long enough to know that we always confirm and prove everything we say. Right, Tom? So what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike, can you please play that clip? Now, one of the things that I have learned about Hillary Clinton 
is that one of her heroes, her mentors, was Saul Alinsky. And her senior thesis was about Saul Alinsky. This was someone that she greatly admired and that affected all of her philosophies subsequently. Now, interestingly enough, let me tell you something about Saul Alinsky. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. On the dedication page, it acknowledges Lucifer, the original radical who gained his own kingdom. Now think about that. This is a nation where our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights that come from our creator. So are we willing Amen. to elect someone as president who has as their role model somebody who acknowledges Lucifer? Think about that. <laughs> Amen. So just to let you know, once again, we back up everything we say with the proof that we get. So, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And he's right. He's right. And um, if you want to, just to listeners who want to know about Rules for Radicals, all you have to do, Google search Rules for Radicals. You can get the free PDF online about it. Um, understand that they use that as their Bible pretty much, except for, you know, you can use it in reverse. You can use Rules for Radicals with truth. True. As a matter of fact, you know, thinking back to this now, uh, we all know that Salon is a progressive rag, right? Mm -hmm. Well, check this out. Uh, they wrote an article that followed uh, Carson doing that piece. And in that, they said uh, something about a, a, a strange, uh, oh, he, he invokes the uh, Lucifer card uh, and turns heads, uh, head scratching at the, uh, uh, well, here, this comes from Salon, right? Now, keep in mind, Salon are a bunch of Valinskyites. Mm -hmm. And if you ever look at their logo, okay, mm -hmm. it's a red S with the rest A-L-O-N in white. The mm -hmm. red S being a symbol that, that many people know means Satan. Now, it, it's not... It, we're not just talking about people who are who are dibble dabbling in the occult. They, mm -hmm. they and, and and even some of them. And I'm gonna I'm gonna you know even be a little honest here. Some of them don't even believe in the existence of mm -hmm. Lucifer or Satan, mm -hmm. but they believe in what Lucifer or Satan mythog mythologically represents. However, then there are, are those among them who do believe that uh, Lucifer did exist, including Saul, where he said, I believe one of his comments about it was, you know, uh, that some of this may be myth, some of this may be history, but then again, we don't really know where mythology uh, ends and history starts. So <laughs> he was essentially saying that, that he believes that there's a strong possibility that Lucifer is real and all of this. Of course he believes that Lucifer is real. But a, mm -hmm. lot, of the, a lot of his followers are on both sides of that fence, but still, think mm -hmm. about this. It is the abandonment of morality, the mm -hmm. abandonment of, of, of virtue. Uh, exactly, that's another comment that he meant, uh, that he said that when he dies, he'd prefer to go to hell because that's where people, all of the, 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 the uh, I forget the term he used for them, uh, it was similar to deplorable. Uh, however, it was, uh, he said that that's where the people with uh, lacking in virtue hang out I like those kind of people. That's what I mean. This is the kind of mentality that Hillary Clinton props up as being. Uh, uh, it just it blows my mind. Well, the the it goes under actually in the personal acknowledgments under the personal acknowledgments, and he names quite a few individuals. But the exact quote that he says it says, "Least we forget, at least an over the shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical." From all our legends, mythology, and history, and who is to know where mythology leaves off and history begins, or which is which, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom, Lucifer. That's the exact quote. That's what he wrote in his book. 
And um, so, yeah, absolutely not something to uh, look up to. But that is the, the type of Bible type uh, things that they use. And they use it effectively because people don't understand it. You have to know your enemy. Um, and without knowing your enemy and what uh, tactics they use, you are not going to be able to yeah. do your enemy. So, um, what I wanted to go over real quick, uh, I have a couple of more things to go over, and then I need to pull Eric and, and John. And feel- Mark, is it is it me that I hear break up, or is, is Lori breaking up? It's it's you. And um, so, what okay, I'm going to do. Sorry about that, folks. Good. That's okay. Uh, Freedom Outpost also covered what everyone is missing about the WikiLeaks Podesta emails, the gift that just keeps on giving everybody. Um, wouldn't you say so, John and Eric? It just keeps on giving and giving and giving, and it's like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to love it. I love it. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely scored an A-plus in my book in terms of... Uh, following through with his claims of uh, the, the importance of the emails that he was going to, that he was talking about releasing and has been releasing. So yeah, he, he came through 100%. Right. So what they're reporting in and Freedom Out. That's what's so great about it. I know. And he didn't do anything. It doesn't matter who's releasing it. And every time Hillary's confronted about it, she wants to blame it on Russia, which is such a crock. It is really a crock. Um, you know, the thing is, she's trying to get off the point of the content of her emails. You know, let, let's get everybody worried about Russia, scary old Russia that's worried about DNC's personal emails or Hillary Clinton's personal emails. No, doubt it, honey. Um, you're not important enough to them. Just saying. Um, so anyway, yeah. what, they're, what, what they're saying in this article is it says, with WikiLeaks massive dump of emails tied to John Podesta, the former chief of staff to President Bill Clinton, who now serves as Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign chairman. Most news outlets focused on Podesta's link to Ms. Clinton, the current Democratic presidential candidate. But what few noticed is how Podesta's emails may help us learn how President Barack Obama may have picked individuals for his top administration positions. According to emails published by WikiLeaks, Podesta, a former counselor to President Barack Obama, who in 2008 served as co-chair of Obama's transition team, received an email on October the 6th, 2008 from Michael Froman, a current U.S. trade representative. At the time, Froman was the top executive at Citigroup. I know everybody's shocked that it's leading to the banks. (laughs) Just a month. Just a month before the election, an email from Fro- from Froman with the subject, quote, lists, unquote, carried three attachments. A list of African American, Latino, and Asian American candidates, plus a list of Native American, Arab, Muslim American, and disabled American candidates, and a similar document on women, unquote. An outline of 31 cabinet-level positions how they might be put together, and who would fill them. In the email, Froman reassures Podesta the list will, quote, will continue to grow, but these are na- the names to date that seem to be coming up as recommended by various sources for senior level jobs, unquote. So if you want to see the rest of that, obviously this is a very long article, very detailed Uh, Freedom Outpost does a really good job of covering that. Um, The title of that one is um, What Everyone is Missing About the WikiLeaks Podesta Emails. And that one is covered by Alice Sallies. So um, make sure y'all look that up and and take a look. Share that information everywhere. So I have some other pretty cheery notes. And I don't know if any of you know this. So I'm going to tell you something I found out today. And I'm kind of... um, with all of the research that I do and, and everything, I'm surprised. I was really shocked when I found this out today, and I was really shocked that I didn't know this before. So do any of you know that Donald Trump graduated from New York Military Academy? I knew. 
I, because you told me earlier. <laughs> yes, yes, he did, everybody. So I'm wondering, um, this this makes a lot of sense as to why he talks military strategy and things like that. And, you know, Clinton wants to say what she wants. I want to see how much military training she's had. Anybody? Jono. Yeah, none. Yeah. <laughs> right. Other than attacking the globe, that does not count. I'm talking about, you know, military training. So I looked up the New York Military Academy to to find out about it. And this is what it says. The mission of the New York Military Academy is to develop, to develop our cadets in mind, body and character to prepare them for further education and to be effective leaders and responsible citizens. Inherent in this mission are the four pillars of success. Academics athletics character and leadership now you can find out about the new york military academy at www.nyma.org and it has a lot of really neat information but one of the things that i thought was really great in the leadership part it says developing future leaders as one of the unique aspects of the new york military academy experience self-discipline Leadership and citizenship are integrated into daily life for the core of the cadet. As cadets move up in rank, they are given increasing levels of responsibility in supervising, leading, and instructing subordinates. Character. Developing good wow. citizens requires developing the essentials of trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. NYMA's honor code, quote, a cadet will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do, unquote, constantly reinforces the character lessons taught every day in and outside of the classroom. Now, would that be a reason that he is so bold against the lies? Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now that makes yeah. perfect sense, doesn't it? It sure does. So anybody who wants to look that up to con to confirm that, oh, by the way, Tom, I'll get a picture of his graduation with him with his parents, with his mom and dad, by the way, to you. I will get a picture of that to you so that's, that we can put that on the site as well. Um, cool. That's fascinating because I, I, I had no clue he had, he had an association with the military like that. So I, I don't think most people know that. And you know what? I think it's because he doesn't like to brag about a lot of things. He really doesn't. Yeah, I know a lot of people like to, you know, call him braggadocious and whatnot. But I think he's actually, you know, there is, there is kind of a braggadocious side to him. But he's also got a very humble side because there's a lot he could bring up about himself that he doesn't. And he's very humble about. So. But just like when he, just like when he pulled the military guys that were stuck because our government wouldn't transport them home, he took his plane. He went and got them. He delivered them home. He was not going to let our guys that had just come back from a, a place of, of conflict sit there um, and, and not be able to get home. And he flew his own plane, Trump, not him himself flying the plane, but he had his plane, picked them up, deliver them home. And he never told anybody. Other people are exposing this. He doesn't do. And you know what? I understand it because he gives out of the pureness of his heart when he does that. And when you give out of the pureness of your heart, you don't do it for recognition. Thus, you don't tell anybody. And um, did you guys hear? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you hear the story about uh, apparently some couple had uh, pulled over and helped his daughter or him or somebody that was close to him, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, just get out of a car trouble situation. Just, you know, something to, you know, just got very, you know, good deed type of thing that these people did. Well, he paid off their mortgage and he never said a word about it. And that was only discovered because, so, you know, not from him or any of his sources. It was because of the people that, that, that were the beneficiaries of him paying off his mor their mortgage. So, you know, there's something else that he did just because out of the goodness of his heart, you know, didn't brag about it, doesn't even bring it up. He doesn't sit there and cite all his good deeds, and he has many. Well, so, and the sorry thing about is, it. Go that, ahead. That, that goes back biblically. When we, when we do it, we do it with a pureness of heart. We don't do it so we can get acknowledgement from other people because we know we will get acknowledged from God. Great point. 
Good point. And, um, and, and I think really, truly, that's why a lot of the things that he does, he doesn't brag about, you know. Um, but I will tell everybody, I found out this, this information in his book uh, that was um, handed to me uh, to look at. And uh, it's Crippled America, How to Make America Great Again. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy it, but if you want to see the the pictures other than, you know, what we're planning on sharing, uh, that's where you can find it in. It's Crippled America, How do how to Make America Great Again, written by Donald J. Trump. And it has some very interesting photographs in there that I thought everybody, you know, just would like to know. I think that's important to know. Because they want to keep uh, bl- lamb blasting him, saying, you know, experience, 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 experience. But, um, you know, they're not, they're not going back far enough. So, and the uh, audacity for trying to, to attack him as being some kind of womanizer, as if in, in this election, even if it were true, if you look at the, the history of the Clintons, oh, my Lord. I mean, is that not the pot calling the kettle black or what? Well, you know, <laughs> see, she sat there. Now, now, Tom, remember the other night we exposed to our listeners, we exposed what the Clinton Foundation's purpose was, right? To build that library. So yep. anything that's not consistent with that makes them fall out of not being a nonprofit, right? At least according to what those documents oh, yeah. Yeah. on how I read them and... So, with that being the case, she admitted to taking tons of money from everybody for for foreign things, um, spending them on quote unquote supposed vaccines and this, that, and the other. And um, that's not part of the Clinton Foundation five hundred one c three. It's for a library. Um, just well, say it. You know, they, they, this is this is uh, one of those things that it's done all the time, and mm-hmm. it doesn't make it right. However, well, I mean, why didn't she just use the Clinton Global Initiative? I mean, why didn't she just use the Clinton Global Initiative instead of the Clinton Foundation? Right. Good point. That's a good question. You know, you know, because then that way, at least it would have seemed a little more legit. Okay, so a little bit more news. Um, a miscarriage of justice against Judge Roy Moore. Do you remember who Judge Roy Moore was? Well, yeah, he had the Constitution taken down out of his court out of his courthouse. Or not the no. Constitution. I'm sorry, the Ten no, Commandments. No, 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 no. He made them stay up. Um, he made them stay up. They wanted them to come down, and he made them stay up. And he was also oh, I, I remember it. Yeah, I, he was I also the reversed, judge yeah. that was looking at the lawsuit over President Obama's birth certificate. Remember uh, that? Uh, yes, right. I remember that. Now okay. I remember. Right. So now, once again, he's under attack. It says, under the progressive leadership of Barack Obama and his like-minded social justice warriors throughout all levels of government, we have entered an area of lawlessness and unprecedented in American history. This is no more apparent than in Alabama, where Chief Justice Roy Moore of Alabama Supreme Court has been unlawfully removed from the bench at the hands of liberal activists on Alabama's Court of the Judiciary, or the COJ. The case is under appeal. The miscarriage of justice was carried out at the behest of the left-wing extremist. Are you ready for this? I know you're going to be shocked, everybody. SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, no, have not the, those. Oh. Yeah, the ones that help. And these are the ones that deny and cultural and, Marxism exists. All right. And the ones that also are, are linked, if you do enough following of the money, are linked with Muslim Brotherhood. And, and the yeah. same ones who help write our domestic terrorism um, junk to target Christians and uh, pro-constitutionalists. Yeah, same ones. It says... Um, an anti-Christian activist organization that seeks to undermine, if not extinguish altogether, the free exercise of religion as guaranteed by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. To add insert, insult to injury, Judge Moore's law clerks were likewise terminated without warning or explanation last week. 
the chief quickly issued a statement in response, quote, my appeal is still pending, but Justice Stewart, interim chief, is acting like she has already decided the appeal against me. I have asked Justices Stewart, Bolin, Maine, and Shaw to be recused from hearing my case. Justice Stewart's actions against me personally and the subsequent firing of the staff attorneys I hired is troublesome, and such actions prejudice the case. Instead of acting as though my appeal has already been decided, I call upon these justices to recuse. None of them should have any role in appointing successor successor justices to hear my appeal. No, I agree. Absolutely. Chief Justice Moore further remarked, quote, I've been targeted for my belief in marriage, a belief shared by the majority of Americans. No one can point to any illegal, unlawful, or unethical aspect of my four-page administrative order. That order was a status report on the case. A justice should not be removed from office because of a political agenda, unquote. The facts of the case are clear and beyond dispute. Chief Justice Moore was arbitrarily removed from the bench for a, quote, 2016 administrative order that was merely a status report of a pending case before the Alabama Supreme Court, unquote. Notes Matt Staver, chairman and founder of the Liberty Council. Quote, the order did not change the status quo. It did not create any new objection, obligation, or duty to, to suspend Chief Justice Moore for the duration of his term is a miscarriage of justice, and we will appeal this case to the Alabama Supreme Court. This case is far from over, he added. So if you want to read the rest of that, it's a very long article in depth. That's also on freedomoutpost.com, and um, it's called The Miscarriage of Justice Against Judge Roy Moore. That was posted uh, the October the 20th, and that was by Matt Barber. So that's the head of going, Get going on that, Matt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a lot of, uh, really, a lot of miscarriage of justice going on. Um, yeah. And, you know, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, pull Eric on. Eric, are you there? I am here. All right. Hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing, Eric? Good to, good to have you on. So for hey, most for of you, us. most of you already know who Eric is, and those of you who are new to the show who do not know who Eric is, this is Eric Hughes Jones of courtroomobservers.com, and um, he's a phenomenal individual, boots on the ground, gets butts in the seats of the courtrooms, and helps with a lot of activism, and he helps to uh, make sure that the the judges know that people are in the courtroom so they can't get by with near as much corruption. Uh, would you like to kind of explain a little bit as to, a little bit better as to what you do, Eric, before we go in detail about what we're going to talk about? We'll yeah, and you can do that on the other side of this break, Eric. Uh, we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Resurrect the Republic Radio Broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network, folks. We'll be right back. While the large majority of Americans have never heard of cryptocurrency, it is the medium of exchange of the future that has already begun. On the other hand, the large majority of RBN listeners are very aware of the corruption within the Fed and the trillions in counterfeit money and credit it has created. Well, would you like to do something about this? OneCoin, the fastest growing company of any kind in world history, will pay you to help do away with the Federal Reserve. Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile, but he surely developed many great improvements in the industry. In 1927, talking pictures made silent movies obsolete overnight, and email has practically done away with the need 
for a fax machine. With cryptocurrency, Bitcoin became the pioneer in 2009. But now OneCoin, as the first ever gold-backed cryptocurrency, has moved to the top of the industry in only two years. And its impact on the financial world could be devastating to the Fed. Bill Gates and Richard Branson and all the jillionaires are already acknowledging that this system of paying for goods and services is becoming what will be recognized as the new worldwide reserve currency. For more information, call Pat Shannon at 601-212-0911. Again, that's Pat Shannon at 601-212-0911. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switch and bait, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they will build a child to Welcome back. They say we need to spread the well. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Well, I tell you what, that is a powerful song, isn't it? It is. Uh, Behold a pale horse, Charlie Daniels. Uh, it is. Yes, yes, yes. It well, uh, Eric, uh, you're up. Uh, you want to fill us in on what you do? Our, our listeners, we have some new ones. Um, and, uh, tell us what you got, brother. Well, uh, just a quick background on the courtroom observers. I realize that we do not have three separate equal branches of government. Uh, all the power ultimately resides in the court. They end up deciding all the important cases, everything from the election that took place. Remember the Florida hanging Chad thing? Uh, you know, to the gay marriage in California. Um, ultimately, that's where the power is. It's just, it's delusional to think that we have, you know, checks and balances in this nation. One gang running the show, and it's, it's, there's no argument that we're living under a complete dictatorship. So realizing that that's where the corruption was, and that's where ultimately the solution would have to be, I just got together with local people, and we all started backing each other up by appearing in court together. It was a little cohesive unit. Uh, had some effect, you know, we had, you know, one time where the cop didn't show up to testify, another time where the cop lied on the stand, um, and even though ultimately in some of the cases, especially early on, um, when we were, you know, a little smaller, um, you know, even though there was a, there might have been a guilty verdict, um, there would be a suspension of any penalty, or, you know, the worst case was we all learned something very important. I watched judges rule against their own written rulings. I watched Judge Daniel Doyle in Rochester of the New York State uh, Unified uh, Court System of New York State Supreme Court uh, issue a ruling in a bank foreclosure. And it said very simply, the relief will not be granted if there is no appearance by the plaintiff's attorney. He was telling Bank of America, hey, you got to at least send your lawyers into the courtroom if you want me to take the guy's house and turn it over to you, the bank. Three times, Bank of America failed to show up in court with any attorneys, and he still gave the house to Bank of America in violation of his own written ruling. And wow. seeing a third of the things, oh, it was <laughs> it was ungodly what's going on. So you know, the solution is put the pressure on the courts. That's where it really is. So you can get yes, you have to have the legislators be honest and be constitutional and all that. But ultimately, you want to cut right to the chase. It's the courts. And if you want to cut right to the chase, the power behind the courts rests in the vicar's office, which is either the vicar general, and most uh, most communities have a judicial vicar now. Who's judicial? Do you think he's vickering people? It's not a conspiracy. Their names are online. 
they have the supreme power over the court from behind the scenes, I can assure you. Um, I've witnessed the courts appoint uh, organizations that are underneath the Vicar General time after time after time after time, and exclusively only organizations under the Vicar's office. So it's, uh, that's, that's what I learned pretty much. And now if we see an injustice going on, especially with people, a lot of smaller cases, we're not looking for the big... I mean, we want to help the Bundys and everybody, but you know, I'll help anybody who's, who's getting abused by their local courts. And the list is quite lengthy. Um, early on in these cases, if you find you're encountering the system... First thing you want to do is look up your local state uh, public officer's laws. We have here in New York State that declares in Section 30.1.8 all public officers must have an open bond filed within 30 days of commencement of their term or else their position is vacant. We called a judge on that recently, and just this week we had a judge have to recuse himself. There weren't any other town justices, so we had to dish it off to the county, and the county has already made it clear they have no interest in the case, so that was a de facto dismissal right there. Just just focus, geek, and go off and get them on their own written rules and regulations. So anyway, um, we pay attention to the courts very closely. I've seen just about every type of, well, you name it, I've seen it in the courts. I'm, I could still learn something, I'm sure. But the corruption is endless. Um, they're all bound together by the Masonic Lodges. Um, the vicar's office is the hands-on manager and tax collector for the Vatican at a local level. So all this is very accessible for people. If you want to make a difference, you want to meet people, you want to you want to kind of spread the word, so to speak, get down to the courthouse because everybody there is getting oppressed. All of them are going to be somewhat or another seeking liberty. I mean, it's fertile ground for 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 trying to find people to you know spread the word of freedom and uh, you know common law, natural rights, the articles on which this this republic was founded, um, all that good stuff that we talk about every night here. And resurrect the republic. Well, thank you for that. And I tell you, uh, social justice uh, in and of itself, I don't think uh, many people know its origins. Uh, the term was coined and created by a Jesuit, actually, a very, very long time ago. <laughs> so surprise, we have these. Surprise. Yeah, it's a surprise, surprise, right? And here we have. Uh, the Southern Poverty, Poverty Liar Center, which is an anti-Christian, uh, uh, far left-wing extremist, private um, organization as well. Private organization. So this 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 uh, this action against the judge carried out at the behest of this left-wing extremist organization. Uh, and I just that wow, that's yeah, that, it's wow. unbelievable. Now I want to tell you something. Tom, and I want to tell the listeners something too, and something that Eric didn't mention. Uh, some people actually reach out to courtroom observers that have heard of courtroom observers before anything gets into the court. And when they do that, um, basically, they point them in the right direction of what to look up in their state, what to look for, what laws, what uh, what possible cases could help them direct them in a route to go, because obviously we can only tell them what to research. You know, we're not attorneys, but we can tell them, Hey, we, well, this says this, so you can go look for this because this is part of our research that, that we've found. And there's a disturbing uh, situation that's been going down in Missouri. Um, Eric, would you would you like to go into that a little bit? I'll try to, so to speak, names have been changed to protect the innocent, but it's a general... Uh, uh, let me cut right to the chase on the thing that really bothered me, with, uh, and I can do the build-up after I make the point. Um, the most disturbing thing to me was to find that the Missouri has lowered its penalty for child kidnapping from a felony to a misdemeanor. And I thought that was really, I mean, ultimately I know why they're doing it, because so their own people can get away with doing what they're doing, which is child trafficking. They do it at the highest levels. We can get down that rabbit hole later, but there's all kinds of examples that have been in the mainstream news. Um, So that was really kind of, that was sad to find that out. Um, And, you know, we have have a case of, of, 
I don't know, Lori. I think I'd rather have you explain it, to be honest with you. Um, I think from a woman's point of view, it would be better. What do you think? That'll be fine. Um, so basically, I'm going to go into the part that disturbed us about this case. Um, anyone who knows uh, knows that um, uh, 16-year-olds can be strong-willed, and they think they know everything, bless their hearts. And, um, and so it turned from a situation of, of where this 16-year-old um, was determined – uh, that uh, they were going to go see their boyfriend slash girlfriend. I'm not going to say the sex, so I'm going to say it that way. Um, and ran off. And then this uh, turned from a situation of run away to being uh, returned at a um, law enforcement agency and the law enforcement agency, um, there was a CPS worker that, well, I don't know if they're called CPS or not. Um, they are with the Missouri Department of Social Services over to there. And the person with the Department of Social Services in front of an officer told the mother, who was clearly distraught, um, either she could A, sign the paper to let the girl go over to a different house for a while or B she would have to let the girl go back with this boy now first of all in Missouri law a child is defined as anyone no matter the mental capacity under the age of 18 years old second of all um, it had turned into a kidnapping situation because it was against the will of the parents so the CPS worker without any justification, interjected herself into this. Then had the girl picked up by the other lady, said she didn't have the ability to um, transport her to the place because she didn't have custody of her. This went on and on. The the parents uh, tried to work with the, the CPS worker and, and the... Uh, law enforcement, law enforcement didn't understand what in the world was, um, to my knowledge, what in the world was really going on with why the CPS worker was doing what they were doing. Because under the statutory definition of abuse, um, uh, it says in uh, 210.110, abuse is any physical injury, sexual abuse, or emotional abuse inflicted on child other than by accidental means by those responsible for the child's care, custody, and control. Except that discipline, including spanking, administered in a reasonable manner, shall not be considered to be abuse. Well, the only thing that was brought up was, um, let me give you the exact quote. The only thing that was brought up was blaming verbal abuse and threatening. Now, with that being said, that consists of telling a 16-year-old no, that you're not going to go do something. Um, and so, what turned from what would be a normal situation and back into the hands of the mother, CPS interjected now, from what I'm finding out, um, I've done some research. So, so what am I concerned about in this situation? Number one, CPS or um, the Missouri Department of Social Services, from what I am finding out so far with every statute that I have looked up, with everything, they had no authority in the first place to intimidate that mother, first of all, to sign that. And second, they surely had no authority. They told the mother she was not allowed to visit her child. She was not allowed to contact her child. They had no court order. They had no reason for that whatsoever. So I checked into um, the Missouri um, Department of Social Services information because I wanted to see what they considered um, a reason to to, you know, to take a child or whatever the case may be. Well, 
when I was looking it up and the facts and answers and questions about child abuse and neglect over there, I did find out that they don't even have the authority in Missouri to remove a child from a home at all. It has to be done through court or through law enforcement. And so this even became more of a disturbing issue because this worker, without any kind of authority from the court or law enforcement, um, absolutely did not get any of that. They not only um, scared the mother to death, they told her she couldn't have any contact with her daughter. So this, of course, became much of a, very much of an overreach. And I'll be able to go in more detail, of course, um, later. But it says flat out in, in their own rules, it says under Missouri law, the final decision to remove a child from the parent's custody can only be made by a juvenile court judge. If there is a concern that a child may be in imminent danger, then a law enforcement officer, a physician, and a juvenile officer have the authority to place a child in temporary protective custody. However, the worker never had that authority. So it was an overreach of authority. This went on for 19 days, Tom. 19 days this mother was having to deal with this situation. So I started researching, of course, and I contacted um, the director over um, over the Missouri Department of Social Services, um, and I've written questions to them, and they have until late this evening before I do an article on this, and I would like to share the questions uh, with the audience, and um, I think that they are legitimate questions and these are general questions and these were my questions number one what is the official title of your department of children's services in missouri please provide the official website if you have one number two does your children's services have a set of bylaws if so please provide them for me via attachment or link number three what is your hiring process for children's services workers and investigators example background check work history and drug testing Number four, what specific qualifications must a child protective service worker have in order to be eligible for hire? Number five, once a potential candidate for employment has passed your process and is approved for hire, is there an oath that they must take? And if so, please provide a copy of the oath. Number six, are child protective service workers in your employee required to be bonded? If so, are they personally required to carry the bond or are they covered by a blanket bond provided by the agency? Number seven, when a complaint of abuse comes in, what is your process of following up on the complaint? Speak with the child, go to the home, speak with parents, etc. Number eight, how long is given for follow-up on complaint of abuse followed up on? Now, mind you, at the same time this is going on, I want to make everybody clear about something. There were death threats made to this family. Okay? So I want to make that very clear. And um, the police... The, the sheriff's department was made aware of that. Um, so I also asked, per your policy, what justifies taking a child out of a home? Uh, also, I asked, per your policy, would blaming verbal abuse and threatening allegations be justification to remove a teenager from a home without a court order? We already know that answer. I just read that. Um, if a child is taken out of the home, do you obtain temporary emergency custody from the court? Per your policy, are you required to give a copy of all documents signed to the parents? If there is a concern but there is no imminent danger, what are your procedures for helping the family when removal is not justified? And I go on and on, but I'm going to skip down because I have 29 questions. It's really good that you're reading that list. You know, I I, I think you're, that is going to gain... It's, it's very educational for people. It's questions that they can ask as well if they're going through a similar situation. So that's, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a cluster of 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 bike down in details. I think those were great questions. You read that list to me before. And I thought it was fantastically thorough, and I mean stuff I would have never thought of. It was in a perfect order, and I just wanted to compliment you on that. Oh, thank you very much. Um, 
So I also asked, in order for a worker to order no contact of a parent with a child that has been removed from the home by the worker, either via visitation or phone, do you have to have a court order? 15, what would justify a no contact order be specific? 16, per your policy, how long once you've removed a child from the home do you have to set up visitation arrangements with the parents while the case is ongoing? 17, if there is no justifiable danger and is found to be a bogus report, what is your procedure? Example, close the case, notify the parents in writing. How long do you have per your procedures to inform the family of your decision? 18, what is your process of a person if a person has a complaint against one of your employees? Who, what, where, when, why, and how? 19, if a child protective service worker is found to be in violation of your rules or statutes of Missouri, and or the U.S. or Missouri Constitution, what is your procedure for disciplinary action? Review, write-up, firing, charges, pressed, etc. Number 20. Is your agency a state agency or a private agency? Please provide the proof. Listing with Secretary of State filing business ID number and IRS EIN number. 21. Where does your agency obtain their funds from, public or private donors? Example, state grants, federal grants. Please provide CAFR for 2014 through 2016. Number 22. Are your employees considered to be public servants, public employees, or private employees? 23. Who is the highest person or organization considered to be over your agency? 24. Are you aware of MRS 455.010.1 that abuse includes but is not limited to the occurrence of any of the following acts, attempts or threats against a person who may be prosecuted, protected, excuse me, pursuant to this chapter, except abuse shall not include abuse inflicted on a child by accidental means by an adult household member or discipline of a child, including spanking in a reasonable manner. 25. Are you aware of MRS 455.010.1F, unlawful imprisonment, holding, confining, detaining, or abducting another person against that person's will? A child under subsection 3 is defined as any person under 17, under 18 years of age unless otherwise emancipated, under 17, excuse me, years of age unless otherwise emancipated. And in other definitions, in their um, Missouri Revised Statutes, it states a child is anyone under the age of 18. So it's conflict of interest there as well. Number 26, are you aware of MRS 568.060 statute and subsections? The reason I'm asking about that is this child had a doctor's appointment that the, the mother had made the worker aware of. The doctor's appointment was not gone to. She would not let the mother take her to the appointment, even though she know she didn't have custody or even temporary custody of this child. And she missed an appointment that was actually for her heart to have her heart checked out. Um, 27, are your employees required to follow all Missouri revised statutes? 28, is it your policy to make your employees aware that parents have constitutional rights and they must be respected? If so, are they made aware of those rights? If they are violated, they may be able to be held accountable via 18 U.S. Code 241 and 18 U.S. Code 242. And number 29, last but not least, if it is not your policy as of yet to educate your employees about parents' constitutional and statutory rights, would you be willing to consider educational training so that your employees will be willing to consider educational training so your employees will understand all Americans' constitutional rights and that it is their duty as a public servant to know these rights as well as not violate them. I have not received any response to these questions. This was sent to the highest office, and they were made aware that uh, today was the deadline. So, um, with uh, the information, you know, and go ahead. Yeah, it was just if it's a good time for me to interject. One of the, you mentioned something before. I didn't want to get too far away past it while it was still on my mind, and it was that uh, this is pre-court. I mean, there's no as much as I love to stay out of the witch's court. It, it this one, it, it's it was scarier in that 
you can see this is this is one of the earliest counties I've seen, one of the first that they really has their own little fiefdom. They got their own operating rules. They're not afraid to say it. They're not adhering to any constitutional standards. They're not adhering to any state constitutional standards. The tyranny of the local is far worse than the tyranny of the federal right now because it's more pandemic and it's more pervasive. The federal goons come down here and there, usually bigger cases. They usually rise to the surface. Everybody knows about it, i.e. the Bundy case and, and Pete Santilli and everybody else. But the tyranny of but the tyranny of the local is far far more is far more across the board. It's coast to coast, north to south. It's everywhere in every small community on a large scale. I've seen small towns with you know twenty thirty thousand people have hundreds of people a night be brought into court on these minor infraction stuff. You know, it's just it's insane. So anyway, it's it's you know there wasn't even any court order in this case to make it clear no. for people there was no. There was no nothing. nothing. There was no there was court no order. There was no involvement. There was no involvement in the court. There was no docket number, case number in their name. Nothing. Zero zilch. Only they didn't heard of them. I'm sure they yeah, had. There was not, there one was of the not other even. things that was a little. One Go of ahead. the other things that was a little scary about this is that you know it was one of the families, and this happens a lot. Was very powerful in that area. You know, mm-hmm. apparently, six of the eight, six hundred of the eight hundred people in the county were all belonging to the same family. I mean, break out the banjo. I, I just, it's so, and they were very powerful, and, they, and it could be obviously connected to the police, uh, sheriff's department, CPS, uh, and all the other agencies that love to swoop in, and, and, and they key in on certain, they build cases on, gosh, there was one uh, ex, there was one, I forget which investigative reporter, discovered that the, uh, the CPS were trolling the school lunch program to see which kids were poor, and couldn't afford lunch, and were on the extra food program at school. And then they invest, start investigating because they knew those people wouldn't be able to afford. A, oh, it was it was ungodly what's going on. So they really they really do conspire uh, to key in on certain certain people they either disagree with politically. I've noticed a lot of times it's Christians and patriots are at the forefront of this uh, government persecution. So uh, right. yeah, I think that had a lot to do with it. And it was it was the one family is definitely trying to gain access to the other family's teenager. And that's kind of scary. And if you don't even have the witch's court to step in, I mean, at least there you got a shot. You know, we can do a phone blitz. We can call the judge. We can file some papers. You know, they may honor it. Maybe they don't. Uh, call the vicar general. But expose them. Let them know everybody's in the nation's watching this case. And the judicial vicars and the vicar generals, they don't like the light of day because they're the behind the scenes. Once again, they're the behind the scenes a hands-on manager for your local courts and your local legislators all answer to the vicar's office. I can right. assure you, so, so and I can prove it. So. Right, and ultimately, ahead, ultimately, so that everybody knows, this lady, because she reached out and we told her what to research, um, and she got copies of all of the uh, codes and the statutes and, and everything that she needed, she finally, um, uh, I have been told that on the 19th, which was yesterday, that she did go up to the house and um, requested her daughter. The person who was holding her daughter called the sheriff's department. If I'm not mistaken, the sheriff's department did the right thing. Um, they saw the codes. They spoke with them. And they told them, we have to let her go with her mom. Um, Because there is nothing, there's absolutely no reason. So this is what activism is about. It's about helping individuals. And um, I just hope and pray that I do get the answers uh, for those questions um, about the situation. And we'll come back after a word from the sponsors. Hang with us. We have a lot more to talk about. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Statmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and of course you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at numanarepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N-N-A, republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. Hey, you've heard of HGH, right? Human growth hormone? Well, actually, it's very important because it affects the way we look and feel. Remember the name Seromax HGH, S-E-R-O-M-A-X. It's an all-natural amino acid HGH precursor. Human growth hormone is known as a hormone produced by our anterior pituitary glands in the brain. As we grow older, those levels decline. And by age 40, nearly everyone is deficient in HGH. And many of the diseases we associate with aging can be traced to those declining levels of HGH. Thankfully, there's help. Visit SeroMaxHGH.com and learn about Seromax HGH. It's an all-natural amino acid HGH precursor containing specialized growth factors and nutrients scientifically shown to help increase the levels of HGH in your bloodstream. Plus, Seromax HGH has zero known negative side effects. Visit SeromaxHGH.com. SeromaxHGH.com. Get moving and join the growing list of satisfied customers who've discovered Seromax HGH. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong part and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-2-KEEP-IT today. Welcome back, folks. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio Broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Folks, we exist off of your donations. And donations have been extremely light lately. We thank everyone who has uh, contributed. However... Uh, we are rebuilding the site. We've been telling you about this. It's it's costing, uh, and we're investing in some new equipment. Uh, we want to bring you a better sound. We want to bring you uh, more content. As you can see, we have people coming together, building a team. RTR Truth Media is actually coming together. So, that being said, it's very essential that we have your support. And I'm going to ask that you please donate tonight we need your money tonight we are putting this together and we are launching very soon uh and the equipment that we need we need funding for as soon as humanly possible you can go to resurrectrepublic.com click on the paypal button you can go to rtrtruthmedia.com uh or click click on it there or you can call rbn tomorrow morning and you can sure make arrangements with Lori to send it be a check if you feel uncomfortable using PayPal. That being said, Lori, take it over. And, you know, I want to point out to everybody, one of the most disturbing things to me was this specific worker threatened the mother. She admitted that the mother had the right to go get her child 
and then told her, but if you do, then I'm going to go to the court and get jurisdiction over this child. That was said to the mother for no justification, no even statutory reason. So this is abuse of authority in, in the most egregious form. And I am thankful, Eric, that, that you helped uh, to get information to her so that she could be informed and armed with the tools that she needed. And I'm thankful that finally, even though it took 19 days, 19 days, imagine that to go get your child and the sheriff's deputy that was there did the right thing and he said you know she has to go with her that is her mother and there is no legal basis for her not to go so he had to let her go with her mother but can you imagine being in this mother's position can you imagine uh, it went from a, you know, just a, a typical hard-headed teenager situation to kidnapping? And it's kidnapping under color of law because you're trying to use your authority over somebody or the perceived authority, and you've never been to the court. They never had any charges. There was no Nothing like that. Just because she said so? How egregious is that? It's sad that for, for that woman to threaten the mother without any court order or nothing. I mean, it always just blew me away that these, this, this agency was truly operating as its own entity. And, I mean, just think about that. Go back in history and look at all the other... All the other nightmares, you know, just, you know, not even 100, 200 years ago, where the same type of stuff happened. Uh, right. You know, agents and agencies of the government setting up, eventually becoming just their own evil entity that operates even out of, you know, even, even, it, it's just, it's, it's very scary to have these local, uh, these local tyrannies. And in, in, in within counties, developing on their own everywhere. Counties are supposed to be uh, taking them, taking their, taking their uh, republic back, so to speak, uh, restoring freedom and sovereignty to the county. And um, the, the enemy knows this, and so they're installing the tyranny at the county level as well um, to counteract the buy local, fix local movement, um, which needs to be strengthened by people like us. So I implore everybody out there to get involved in some way or another. Um, courtroom observing and meeting people down at the courthouse, believe it or not, is the best place. Um, it's mm -hmm. just you pass out cards, you can pass out flyers, um, educate people, and uh, you'll probably see people you know down there you know, who've got a ticket or something, and, and that, that's where we're going to make a difference at the local level. Um, in the you know leaning on the judicial system, and of course the legislators as well. They have to start. You know, stop passing laws first and then start repealing. But you notice how nothing ever gets repealed. Even it's very rare that a law gets repealed or a statute um, that's in violation of the ultimate law. And so it's, 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 a, it's, it's a tough nut to crack, but it's got to be done locally. And that was scary that this woman, this CPS worker, was threatening the mother. If you don't sign this, and this is, I, I just went through another case on a woman who got a traffic citation. And the trooper threatened her. If you don't sign this citation, I'm going to impound your car and take you to jail. This mm -hmm. CPS worker in this case that we're talking about tonight, uh, Mrs. So-and-so, if you don't sign this, I'm going to take you to jail tonight. Not, not the daughter or the son. Her. I mean, it, there was, it was, it's amazing. I mean, the Nazis did that. And so it's not hyperbole to, to use that word right now because it is truly what the Germans did. Uh, to their, you know, you're going to force force you to sign this document, or we're not going to let you out of jail. That's what they did to Stephen Dean, one of our, our really our first big case with the Court of Observers. He got set up on a gun charge by the FBI. Uh, it, 
uh, and the FBI committed multiple felonies in the setup themselves. They broke their own statute that they were charging him with. Um, so anyway, it's this whole force, forcing people to make statements, forcing people to sign things, forcing people into contractual obligations through licensing and permits. Um, it's, it's, it's really hitting home in the local communities. And, and so I kind of see it at the local level. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, the threats, that was, that was one of the several things that really disturbed me about this case. We we're going to take the mother to jail. She didn't sign a piece of paper. No court order. There was no so criminal act on the part of the mother. There was no, she wasn't arrested for anything. She wasn't sitting in jail. You know, it, it, it was just, it was really, really sad what's going on. The, um, I believe what it was, was they were going to let the uh, girl go back to the boys. Is what it was. Not her go to jail. Yeah, with no adoption process, no no transfer order. Right. I mean, there's just nothing but one family wanting to get 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 a, 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 another teenager to be with. It was just, <laughs> it was very. It's it's scary, and uh, it makes me want to get involved even even at a stronger level because if we just expose this, a lot of times just the phone calls. That's why the courtroom observers have been effective because people weren't afraid to call and speak out and say, you know, I know I'm watching this case. Uh, send me an email from the Send me a deposition from the victim of this crime. In almost every case we've done, there's no victim. I've mm -hmm. had state police as recently as today tell me society is a, is a victim. The state is a complainant. There, so there was a complaint formed. I, I said, who is the complainant? Who, is, who, who claimed the victim status on that complaint form, Rupert? Oh, the state of Nevada, the state of New York, the state of Georgia. They all think that society can be a victim. That's and and uh, but I do know this: uh, communicating with people in the system, like the police, is beneficial. If you keep mm -hmm. your head about, you keep it cool. They're doing atrocities. They're committing atrocities, and that's frustrating. So it's easy to get you know get kind of fired up verbally. Uh, but if you maintain your cool, and uh, it's 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 you can get through to some people at least you know somewhat um, enough to I think make a difference. Um, but it's not easy, and and but it's good training in that it it, it forces you as, as a communicator, whoever you are, your patriot, trying to wake people up, um, to be concise and get it pair it down to a couple of major issues. And I found the effective ones were number one, we're a republic, not a democracy. It doesn't matter what Amen. the people vote for. We're not going to have no fifty one percent of the wolves voting to eat twenty the other forty nine percent of the sheeple. Okay, mm -hmm. number two, society can the society cannot be a victim. The state cannot be a victim. The county cannot be a victim. It is a fictitious entity. It exists only in the mind. It's a creature mm -hmm. of the mind. There's states that say that. Um, it's not just me. Uh, so it, that society can't be a victim. The state, if you can't pull forth a living man or woman, I mean, where's Joe Society or Susan State? They don't exist. They, there's no such person. Bring an actual living man or woman to forge a complaint. All right, then we can talk. Right. Um, you know, uh, 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 number three, if you're working in the system and you've taken an oath, and most this is this is, this is the big rub that these guys are, and girls are going through is they've taken an oath with their right at the same time, simultaneously taken an oath with their right hand to support and uphold the Constitution for the United States of America. Hopefully, they worded it like that. And with their left hand, I will swear to faithfully uphold the laws of the state of New York or the state of uh, Montana or the state of Florida or whatever. Uh, and so they're caught, and immediately, because of what's going on, because it's obvious, the oath with the right hand to uphold the Constitution is in conflict with the statutes that these states are setting up. Most of them are unconstitutional, and just because a couple of judges said otherwise, all of a sudden, you know, they're out there, pulling people out of their cars, and then if it goes bad, people get killed. Yeah, so, but the reality is, though, Eric, just, just to chime in on that, the law of, let's say, New York, like you just said, is the, the New York Constitution, not the statutes. It is, and, and the brainwashing is working so well that they're just, they're just teaching these guys otherwise, even though it's a lie, and the guys foolishly in the system, the enforcers, are, are believing it. Quite a, to a great extent, and that's why stepping into the system at all almost precludes you from being a good guy. You can't serve an evil master and unlawful statutes and enforce contract on people that haven't consented to it at the point of a gun and want to disarm them simultaneously 
and you still call yourself a good guy. It's just impossible. It becomes an impossibility. And, you know, nobody's yeah. starting any war against the police. The police started the war against the American people with this absurd drug war started by that great conservative Ronald Reagan. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, you know, so back to the, you know, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're in conflict, this is the message to the people in the system, when you're in conflict with your two oaths, one to uphold the Constitution and our freedom, and the other one to uphold the idiotic statutes that are put forth by prostitute members of the bar who are loyal to a foreign nation and being told they have sovereign immunity. When you're in conflict with those two oaths, your oath to the U.S. Constitution, the people, the common law, supersedes that. It's, it absolutely trumps everything else. So yeah. if that, that, if that's an easy one, okay, so you can put that to them. Uh, you know, society can't be a victim. Uh, no, where, where, show me a deposition from the actual person who was victimized by what I did. And, I, and eventually they realize they're just enforcing military statute, admiralty law, on mm-hmm. three people that have not consented to it. So it's operating under deceit, and that always gives us the moral high ground because the father of deceit is Lucifer. Uh, and just to get back to what you were talking about before, and many of these people in very high positions actually are Luciferians, and they call themselves that. Um, a very reliable source has told me that there's all kinds of bizarre things going on. Uh, you know, most of your public officials, many of your public officials, you know, are not the church-going good people that they appear to be. Let's just leave it at that. You know, I wrote um, something a long time ago I want to share with all of you, and I called it Congressional Trader Mentality, and I think it fits very well with everything that you're saying right now, Eric. And this is what it says. Land of the free and home of the brave, Congress believes we are their slaves. Do as I say, not as I do. Obama cares not for me, only for you. We played the game, got into office, you see, so we could then in turn rape humanity. We pass bills, illegal indeed, that tramples all constitutionality. We do not care if America falls, nor the definition of freedom for all. Our line is drawn with pen in our hand, smacking the gavel and acting globalist plans. We mock Americans taking a stand while using the Alsinki and Marxist plan. Racist, racist, we do say, while secretly stealing your freedoms away. Divide and conquer, this is a must. We can't have citizens united against us. While we pass bills corporations have made, we are laughing all the way to the bank. Americans are stupid in our eyes, you see, for they do not know this web that we weave. From NSA spying to DHS bliss, it's all for your safety, was Hitler's list. Oh, did you think Homeland Security was new? No, it was part of Hitler's coup. Massacring millions of Jews, you see. Hitler did it all legally. So we here in Congress continue laughing, you see, supporting depopulation through policy. So do as I say and not as I do, for those death panels were created for you. Freedom and illusion. Globalism is the game. You've now intentionally become our slaves. So bow to big government. This is a must. It provides more power to us. If you do as I say and not as I do, maybe we'll skip death panels for you. Do not stand. Do not fight. Do not quote what is right. For truth like a fire is contagious, you see. It destroys all tyrannies. This is important and this is a must. To be supported by big government nuts. If you do not support corruption, you see. America will be restored as the land of the free. Yay! Plod, 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 plod. Clap, clap, clap. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic, Lori. Oh, thank you. But um, you know, I th- I think that pretty much sums up all of it. 
you know, and I, I really do want these individuals to answer my questions so that I can um, have a fair article come out about this. But I, they that's almost a, that's almost that was they, almost the template for a, any yeah, somebody could extrapolate that with just a couple of minor adjustments and make that a, a, a requirement question list for for almost any agency. You know, name it, the Bureau of Land Management, the DEA, the FBI, whatever. You know, show your authority, your standing, your jurisdiction outside the 10-mile toilet of Washington, D.C. You know, where mm-hmm. do you get up? You know, and you could, those are great questions. And I think they should be put yeah. to every agent operating under color of law in our corporate government at the local, you know, and federal level, all of them. I think. I think definitely they should be answered in this situation because the the girl was removed without any justification, without any court order, according to their own rules. And not only that, she was not taken to the doctor where she needed to get her heart checked out. There was medical um, situation where she needed to be seen. It took weeks to get that appointment and then had to miss it because of what this this worker did. Somebody needs to be held accountable for that. And then threatening a mother for no reason had absolutely no authority to do so? It was jail. It was bizarre. It was really sad. Sign this or go to jail. <laughs> Not even an order from the courts. You know, <laughs> what do you do then? You just, it's, it's, you're, and, and knowing that they're all a private corporation, uh, every one of these agencies has letters of incorporation either directly or through the through the county or state that they're 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 working within, um, you know, and they're doing business. They even say on their machines, "Our business hours are." I mean, they don't even. It's not. It's not. They're being convinced that it's okay to operate as a non-governmental agency, but act like you're a governmental agency. <laughs> and and once again, it's deceit. It's deceitful, and people in the system need to start getting around to realizing that you know you can't serve an evil master and still be a good guy or girl. Uh, right. Too many people are uh, out here uh, among us are being trampled and ripped off, and and when things go bad on police encounters, people get hurt really bad because it's you know mm-hmm. they're armed heavily, and they're being trained that uh, everybody's a threat until proven otherwise. Everything's upside down. You're guilty until proven innocent. You know, uh, do as we you know do whatever we you, you say we we tell you to do. Uh, you know, when they're the public servants, we have to comply with them. Just hands up every time. That's it. No matter what. I mean, Even though they're breaking their own law. Yeah, they're breaking their oh, own law. Every day, they're so, breaking their own law every day. The judge just yeah. we had here this week did what didn't, didn't, didn't file his oath three years ago. Positions mm-hmm. vacant. We called him on it, and he had to walk off the case. So, right. you know, it's it's an, it's an ongoing battle that takes place at the local level, in the court. And what uh, and people that are listening need to understand what Eric just said. Every, uh, or in almost every state, judges are required to have an oath and bond. Um, look up your statutes if you're going to court. Make sure you get a copy of their oath and bond. If it is not current and it is not according to the statute, uh, like I believe New York, if you don't time it, if you don't uh, file it in a timely manner, they have vacated that seat, which means they're impersonating a judge at that point. They are no longer a judge if they have not filed that in the proper manner. So what you need to do is you need that's the first thing if you're facing any court case. Uh, you need to check out the oath and bond. You need to check out the statutes for the state and how long they have to file them and what the requirements are on it. And if they don't have it, you need to make it known because then they're just impersonating a judge or impersonating an officer. They really are. So, it would, it I mean. It would be as if you or I would go up there and say, okay, street Nazis, go out, round them up, bring them in. We're going to take their money tonight. Thousands of dollars coming through. That's all it is. Um, you know, the, the, the money once again, they think they're above the law. Yeah. And, you know, I want to tell all the listeners, this is one of the another reason why it's so important to study, because I'm sure all across this union, there are individuals that you know that have had issues or whatever the case may be. And if you know and you've done the studying, you can at least direct them and point them in the direction that they need so that they know their rights so that they can go get their child lawfully, legally and lawfully. And it was, it's just as simple as helping others. 
It doesn't have to be in the court to get it done. We have to unite as a people and we have to look out for each other. And we do that by being educated and by helping others and reaching out. If you would want somebody to help you in that situation, then be willing to help others. Uh, we do have uh, only four minutes to close, but we do have a caller on the line. Jason, are you there? Wow, I feel, wow, I feel like Ben Carson in the first debate. I thought I'd never get a chance to talk. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, we it, only it have... happens. It was you, you Go guys ahead. have covered so much, so much ground in so many areas. I actually finally, and your your male two hosts there, they know me. This is Jason from Basket of Deplorables YouTube channel, and oh, now we have a backup. Jason, I know who you are. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we have a bet. I'm very well, thank you. How are you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. Good, good. And we have a backup channel now, which is Basement of Deplorables on YouTube, because they're shutting us down left and right, and it's not going to happen. It's, it's just ridiculous. But I have so many notes Jason. here. I wrote down. Jason. Yes. Jason. Yes. Hang on one yes. second, because I know what you're, you're, what you're sharing here. Greg in Arkansas, pop on. You have something really quick? Hi, I'll do it real fast. I'm on the Arkansas-Missouri border fighting a driver license thing right now. What I just found uh -huh. out is the titles of nobility have electronic filing and the people don't. So you might want to watch out for that in Missouri. Uh, obviously, the playing field's on level. Um, yep. Yep. And uh, uh, obviously, they have the better of anything going on because I have to keep running around. I've got like 800 miles tied up and running paperwork back and forth because they have okay. electronic filing and we don't. Thanks, kids. Love your show. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, <All> right. <laughs> Jason, sorry about that. He said he wanted something really quick. I wanted to give you both a chance to, to do your thing. Go ahead, buddy. What a what a great caller. Uh, Greg, thank you so much. Um, so that yeah. being said, again, I'm representing um, Basket of Deplorables YouTube channel and also when they shut us down, because they will, uh, oh, eventually, yeah. Basement of Deplorables. That's our backup, and we're going to have 20 more. I don't do the moderation, but I represent them on uh, radio. I call into radio shows all across the country, and uh, they're not going to shut us. They're not going to shut us up. So I have all these notes yeah. here written on written on a torn up envelope because you guys have covered so many comments. So if it's appropriate, would you guys like to go back to CPS taking children? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We have our, no, we have this, two minutes. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep it to one minute so you guys can comment. CPS taking children, um, this is basically just an exercise by the super state to train. And, and it's a, I, I'm not a father. I'm 32 years old. I don't have any kids. But I can't imagine what that would be like. And I, I'm sure there are bad parents, and I'm sure there are rare circumstances where maybe some intervention may be required, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. to yeah. me, in majority of, you know, from my research, it's an exercise of the government in full spectrum dominance. Your mm -hmm. kids don't belong to you. If you don't conform, and it goes state by state, the cases that I've seen, and I don't have any specifics, I don't have time to write them down, but are state by state where they take kids away from their families, which is one of the most, it's probably the second worst thing to a death that you could experience, having right. a child taken away from you if you're a good person, right? So right. my my last notes here are, uh, so they're training the public to accept that the state is God and mm -hmm. they can intervene in your family in such an intimate way, and it's not even intimate in... You know, oh, we're watching you in the bedroom. Oh, we're this, we're that. Literally removing a child from a good mm -hmm. parent just based on yeah. random baseless mm -hmm. statutes makes me mm -hmm. so sick. And I heard, I've been on hold for so long. Yeah. I heard you guys talking about trafficking in human flesh. And, and you know, just to Half make an a hour comment ago. to that. Just I'm, I'm going to hang up and I'll, may I take your, uh, your answer off the air? 
Yes, yes, thank you can. You. Just to make more, do you want thank to keep you me on? very I much. Keep um, just just right, to make a you. comment about that, Jason. I have volunteered. Um, just to let everyone know, I've done volunteer work for Department of Children's Services for over 20 years. Okay, so I've seen some really egregious cases, and I'm talking about, and I have helped. I've never worked for them as far as money, but I have volunteered for them. This is not one of those cases. This worker did not have anything to back up her claims. This was not an egregious case. The only thing that was egregious was her violation of Missouri law as well as violating her abuse of authority. And with that, I want to say thank you. God bless you. Join us again tomorrow. And uh, as always, watch your backs and check your facts. Visit us again tomorrow night. Thanks for listening. I'm not interested in... uh Photo ops. Photo ops. You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network.